Amen. <laughs> Good to have you guys. Um, and welcome to the Shadow Water Labs, the virtual edition. Um, we started yesterday and we've had some pretty good conversations. Yeah, my name is Martin Toloko. I'm a multidisciplinary artist. Um, I work in wood uh, carving, which is sculpture. Um, okay, yeah. It's back. My name is Martin Toloko. I'm a multidisciplinary artist. Uh, my work basically in uh, paint, uh, sculpture, which is wood carving, studio practice, perf uh, performance, and video work. And here yeah, uh, I'm representing uh, with some work which I developed uh, from my experience uh, in the COVID. Yeah, so that's just a few about me. When we are going, I can speak more about what I have. Share. Hello, my name is Blebu Michael Jackson, an artist. My work stands from. <laughs> my name is Blebu Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my work stands from um, abstract drawing, sculpture, mural, etc. Yeah, hello. My name is Percy Ninote. I'm a multidisciplinary artist in my work span from installation and video art. Yeah. All right. Um, can we have another mic, please? Um, the mm -hmm. aesthetic actions of representation, particularly Africans, 
from people of African descent representation within art, within media, but then also um, um, hello, hello, are we live? Are we good? Okay. And um, mythical imagination, you know, um, I think that in modern Ghana, um, between independence and now, we've had we've had very little um, exploration of our mythology in different fields to the point that um, you have to seek the, these things to know about them. And there isn't any place if if there isn't any storyteller in your family that can pass it on to you. There's there's virtually no way you can study these things, you know. And there might be research material in the academy, but it doesn't quite cover the depth and the extent of our mythical imagination. And I'd like for us to delve into that, um, ways of ex exploring it, ways of exposing it, and making it more accessible, you know. Um, so any of you, any of you can um, can take that, you know. Particularly, that also has a lot to do with. Um, how we are represented through our stories, um, through our art, you know, um, and how lost these uh, myths and legends are within our context. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, my work that I'm presenting this year for the festival uh, has summarized all what you said, uh, looking at the, the theme I'm building and it's true what you said is true. Uh, actually, there's a lot that uh, we, the new generation, we need to learn. But uh, these, all these things have been, uh, I mean, hidden, and uh, a lot of them have been misrepresented. And so, um, yeah, I think when I'm going, I'll drop it on the line. Yeah. So, for my work, uh, actually, I'm drawing the concepts uh, from my uh, experience with my grandparents. And my work that I'm doing is about uh, me confronting my ancestors uh, about the idea of death phobia uh, in my practice. Uh, because I deal in uh, the idea of decay and death. And I'm, try I'm trying to... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, represent and uh, uh, confront myself with what I've learned from my people, uh, from my grandparents. There's a lot that I've learned, and this was because of my interaction with them. I that not be present with them, I might not be do, able do you, to. Do you want to um, give us a few examples of um, the things they passed on to you by way of um, you know, ideas of mythology, what they represented? Yeah, uh, I could say the first thing, like, one thing uh, that I, I will not throw away is craft, which I've, I have, and also the culture and how we represent ourselves. So if we talk, at a, if we talk about the culture of death and how uh, our parents uh, present body, they, I mean, uh, present uh, these bodies uh, before they been accepted to the next world. And if, if these cultures are not performed, the body is not accepted, so that's why even in the in the uh, uh, in this world where, where we have Christianity even dominating most of the churches. Before you take the bodies, they uh, I mean the family member need to do their tradition before uh, the body is being taken. Yeah. So, so can we? Do you want to tell us about some of these customs and rites and rituals? Yeah, and also this death phobia you speak about. I like for you to delve more into it. I, I think most people need to understand, like, at the core of it, why this fear of death when it's um, it's such a part of our lives. But then also, I'd like for you to link that to these rituals and rites that are performed to allow the body and the spirit to transit into um, a different world. Yeah. Uh... I think one of the rites that they perform to the bodies, uh, the uh, I mean the cleansing and the traditional the pouring of libations and what bathing the body 
So the bathing is a, a ritual and when they are doing the bathing. How, how, how I'm aware that there's there are certain herbs that are used. Mm -hmm. they, there's, there's particular songs, there's particular prayers that are said. Um, it would be nice if you broke it down for us. Broke, yeah. yeah. But the herbs, actually, I was not able to go close to the bodies to exper uh, experience this because most of these things, uh, because I'm really young uh, too, I mean, to, to go uh, and interact with bodies. Why? And for, especially for me, that's what. That's why I'm breaking, I'm using performance to deal with this, especially for me. It, it's a hard, hardly difficult for me to go to bodies. Why? And even for my why? dad. Why? <laughs> yeah. Because I had uh, this feeling, and most of this has been, uh, is from the Christianity and uh, uh, the way we've been brainwashed about tradition, our local tradition. And we thought uh, this tradition is. Uh, I mean, devilish, and uh, it could affect you. Uh, we feel like if we get participated, you might have uh, been affected, and this will be against your life when you might not prosper, or maybe you might end up uh, losing your life quick. Wow. So uh, at a certain point, I had uh, I had it difficult to uh, participate in most of the rituals that go on. But what I knew is if those rituals are not performed, the body is not. I mean, the body the doesn't transit yeah. into the next world. Yeah, it, it doesn't. Even it transits, the body needs it. Uh, I mean, the body uh, would hunt back in the ritual. So that brings me back to the performance that I did uh, recently in Kumasi, which we call uh, I title uh, keep, Let's Keep Wake. It's about wake keeping and the idea of wake keeping and why we have wake keeping. Actually, wake keeping. Uh, uh, in the uh, uh, old, olden days, and uh, when the world is no more, I mean, modern that we don't have fridges and other stuff to preserve bodies. When uh, we lost someone, when they lost someone, the body is being preserved in the house with the herbs that you were talking that I couldn't mention to you. And the whole, a hole is deep. Then this, but the body will be put on the hole for the water to drain. While we apply this body, uh, these herbs on the body. And there's an animal which I would not, I'm trying, I have to figure out the English name, but in a way we call it Bete. Uh, it's a local animal. It's, it's an animal that hunts dead body. And when the body is left and no one attend or we don't have people, this animal come for the body. And so to prove the whole body, they come for the body. Maybe the body will destroy the body. When you come, when you got notice quick and you are, you, uh, present a sin, you might save the body, but then the body will be, uh, I mean, distorted. So to uh, stop this, uh, we have way keeping, which is called betenyanya uh, in our look in my local lang uh, language, which yeah. is away, which is what we translate as way keeping. Betenyanya. Yeah, So that means sucking away the animal called bete. So we have people sitting around drumming. Watch the body. Yeah. So that's why we have drums to keep. And you can't stay night without doing idle, you sleep. So there should be a music, there should be some, that's why you have drums and people, some of the family members cooking and all that stuff to keep awake so, so that nobody sleeps for the next day when the body is being prepared for burial. And so that's why this modern system that we have now, we have public address system now, that if you go to funerals, you have public address system playing that we have uh, people dancing to keep mm -hmm. for the next night. Yeah, so that's part of the rituals about the death that we are saying. And we're talking about death phobia, as I told you, I really had a difficult, I mean, seeing dead body. And uh, when I watch a body, I feel like when I go to the room, I feel like the body is, is being chasing okay. after me. And also much of this has been influenced by our movies, these local movies that we watch, that we see body. Mm -hmm be resurrected and we see bodies being played as evil when they die and like yeah. uh, when you sleep you have them in your dreams so yeah that's that's, that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the kind of myth making though yeah that comes from a lot of um misrepresentation yeah. um and distortion of information um there's there's widespread unawareness of 
what happens when a person dies, what happens to the spirit. There's a whole traditional philosophy around it, you know. Um, but then we are also bombarded with other ideas, you know, that sort of um, turn our own philosophies upside down. And when people do not have knowledge, I suppose they they believe whatever is presented to them, you know. Um, and that's why you have, I think that we have movies that mis misrepresent our rituals and our traditions, you know, of um, people dying and becoming evil. You know, it's a, it's also a form of myth making, you know. That's um, but it's one of distortion also, because um, when pe we believe that when people die here, they're not exactly they're not dead. You know, they leave their bodies here, but they're still their, their spirits are still alive. Yeah. So well, that's touch on. Uh, I mean, uh, the belief we have in our grandparents, you know, in my tradition. Uh, we see uh, our grandparents as our protector. So when your granddad, um, my granddad passed uh, recently, uh, this early this year, um, we have names for them. This, they are traditional. My granddad is called uh, uh, Kajawusu. It's, what does that mean? He's the god of he worship uh, beasts, the bees. Bees? So, yeah, the bees, yeah. So, and they are powerful. And Kajawusu means Bees, the god of bees is greater the, uh, than the god of thunder. A so is the god of thunder. So names like that when we a so, if, a so like Kajawusu. Kajawusu. So the god of bees how is, is greater how than is, how is the god of bees greater than the thunder god? That's the I, I thought <laughs> I the can't, thunder god was like yeah, the most yeah, powerful. Most powerful. But I mean uh, in tradition we have most of the gods have people each of them believe in their their power that they possess. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have sometimes in funerals when chiefs and queens visit, there's this kind of uh, conflict uh, or, I mean, a game between them to try each other to see how powerful the other person is. And this, uh, in that, we call it two people who like is shooting by spirit. And that's when it's happened to you, you need to, the person that shoots you, need to perform a ritual to take the bullet out of you. So that's when it's happened to you, you feel pains, like you, you have your body, you feel like some uh, spikes or something is planted into your body. And when this thing is done, rituals, you know how that come out, broken glass and other stuff that's so, from so your you body. Need, you need to explain this to us properly. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that you can be shot. Yeah, you spiritually. But not physically. Not physically, so that they know when he shot me, I will know that you've tried me. So it's like trying power to see which of them is higher. I mean, if this chief or queen visited, you want to see, you know, you heard of the name of this king, so like this, in this village or in this community is the greater. So when it's come, sometimes not only the kings that try, some of the, uh, how do we call them, that suffer, some of them, they try to see, because to see how they, they want to weigh your power to see how heavy you are and intent. I think this happened to my granddad in my dad's uh, uh, town. You know, my dad is from Dangolo, and my mom is from the Agaveda, Sugako area. So it's the dialect is different, and the tradition is also different. So my dad is close to that Bozume, and you know how powerful those people are. So when my granddad visited, he experienced this. And he has been talking about this. Uh, from the the people in my grand and uh, my dad's town are very powerful because they tried him and yeah, and they shot him. 